look at bifurcations. Before studying bifurcations, let us quickly take a look at something which we had studied in the previous lecture. That is the stability of fixed points. So we had seen fixed points in the last lecture. So we have an equation x dot as some function of x. And that curve looks something like this, for example. Okay. So wherever the curve fx crosses 0, those are our fixed points. And now we had seen that if we have an initial condition over here, the x dot at this point is negative. As a consequence, this point will try to move towards the left. If we have an initial condition over here, the x dot at this point is greater than 0 and so the point tries to move towards the right. Essentially, all the points in this place, all the points in this space and all the points in this space, they are attracted towards this point, this fixed point. Whereas, if we have and in a point over here, the x dot is positive, so it tries to go over here. So this point is also an attractor. This point is a repeller because point over here tries to go towards the right, a point over here tries to go towards the left. So this helps us in defining stability of fixed points. So there are some fixed points which attract like these. And there are some fixed points which repel. What dictates whether a fixed point attracts or not? It is quite obvious that the slope over here is positive, so it's a repelling point. The slope over here and over here is negative, and so it's attracting. But let us try to prove that. And while this is not a course for the theoretical aspects of all this but i think this is something which would help us in the future so let us consider the behavior of this equation near a fixed point so let us denote the fixed point by x star so let us consider the behavior of the difference of x from x star that is the behavior of x in the neighborhood of a fixed point. So it is in the neighborhood of a fixed point. So d eta dt is going to be equal to dx dt minus dx star dt. And dx dt is equal to f of x, while dx star dt at a fixed point is f of x star and it is 0 because it is a fixed point by definition okay so now let us write f of x in terms of a taylor series expansion so x so this can be written as f of eta plus x star essentially which is f of eta plus f of or we can write it as this. So f of x star plus del f del x at x star times eta plus del 2 f del x 2 1 by 2 factorial eta square and so on. So this is just a Taylor series expansion. So we have performed a Taylor series expansion of this particular expression. And at the fixed point, f of x star is 0. So this boils down to del f del x at x star times eta. So d eta dt is del f del x at x star times eta plus order eta square terms. So these are all higher order terms. And if eta is small, that is, if we are really looking into the neighborhood of x star, then eta will be quite small. 
because x is very close to x star so the higher order term contributions will be small compared to the leading order term so this particular term is the leading order term so if we just focus on this particular equation it says that 1 by eta d eta dt is equal to del f del x at the fixed point and if del f del x is positive then we have exponential growth okay so if del f del x at x star is positive then you have exponential growth locally and if del f del x is negative then you have exponential decay locally and this is what we have physically seen over here here del f del x so f prime x at this fixed point is negative and so this is an attracting point because points nearby will decay that is eta will reduce from this particular equation as time increases eta will reduce when del f del x is negative for this point as time increases del eta del uh, so the eta will increase that is the difference between x and x star will increase so this is a repelling point okay so it's an unstable point it is also rather it is called as an unstable point while this is a stable point this is a stable point and really you don't need to go into all this algebra to really understand whether a point is stable or unstable you can simply go by the same logic if you start at this point dx dt is positive and so it will move towards a positive x you start at this point dx dt is negative and so you go towards lower values of x so what this um, small proof tells us that if del f del x is zero then you have to look at the higher order terms but geometrically it is much more easier to see so let us draw the condition where del f del x is zero something like this at this point del f del x is zero and f is also zero so obviously this is a fixed point but what happens over here if we have this as an initial condition x dot at this point is positive so at this point tends to go towards the right if we have an in initial condition over here once again uh, the x dot is positive and it tends to go over here so all the points on this side they tend to go towards this all the points on this side they tend to go away from this so it's called as a half stable point okay it attracts half the points towards itself and it repels half the points away from it i mean not half the points in the sense 50 50 but one set of points it attracts one set of points it repels so in a 1d problem it is called as a half stable point so with this uh, thing out of the way let us move on to bifurcations so often we will have conditions where the physics of the problem will be dictated by some controlling parameter okay so let us have a look at the ordinary differential equation x dot is equal to r plus x square now this is a very famous prototypical problem so the problem at hand is x dot is equal to r plus x square so let us try to look at this problem from a geometric viewpoint let us try to find out the fixed points and their stability so let us go to our python console let me copy paste this because we will be needing all of this all right so now let us um, plot that diagram first so x equal to np dot length space minus 2 to 2 r equal to say 1 
and x dot is r plus x square then we will do plt dot plot x comma x dot So it looks something like this. For completeness, let us also plot the x-axis. So plt dot plot x comma zero times x. Let us make it a black line. All right. So we see that when r is positive, this curve does not cut the x-axis. So what is the meaning of this? When the curve does not cut the x-axis, it means there is no fixed point. Okay, so all the initial conditions over here, they will be accelerated towards the right. Because for all points, everything is headed towards the right. All the x dots at all these points are positive, And hence, all the flows are towards the right. Let us make this interactive. Let me remove r. Let me pass r as a input to the function. So def c fixed points and the input will be r let us set a default value of 1 and over here we will put everything inside the function definition and we will say w equal to interactive we will pass the function handle and we will say r it goes from minus 2 to 2 in steps of 0 0.2 we will display the widget so this is the widget so let me change r let me increase it so obviously increasing it makes it go further towards the upper direction so there are there are no roots as i reduce r we see that as we reduce r there's a point when r equal to 0 there is exactly one point of intersection that point of intersection is obviously x equal to 0 when r is negative we will have two points of intersection and so we have two fixed points so when r is less than 0 we have two fixed points so what are the values of fixed points let us see at the fixed point x dot will be equal to 0 so x will be equal to plus minus square root of minus r so when r is positive obviously there are no roots no real roots when r is negative there will be two roots when r is zero there will be one root which is x equal to zero so what is happening as we are changing the control parameter r so r can be interpreted as a control parameter as we are changing the value of r from negative to positive we are having a change in the fundamental behavior of the system okay so if i draw on this axis r and on this axis the fixed points for r positive there are no fixed points for r equal to zero zero is a fixed point for r negative there are two fixed points Okay, so for r equal to this value, the fixed points are this and this. So there is a fundamental change in the behavior. As we cross r equal to 0, okay, r equal to 0 is a point, is a, is a changeover point from having two roots to having no root. Okay, so here there are two fixed points. Here there is one fixed point. And here there are no fixed points therefore we say that the system has suffered bifurcation at r equal to 0 and the r critical is equal to 0 this kind of behavior is called as bifurcation because by changing r we are changing the fundamental characteristic of the equation so this occurrence is called as a subtle node bifurcation
and the saddle node bifurcation in this particular context makes no sense because saddle node bifurcation is more generally valid for phase portraits in three dimensions or bifurcation diagrams in three dimensions so over here it is also called as a turning point bifurcation it's called a turning point because we will see why it's called a turning point so now x equal to plus minus root r is a root right so we know that they are fixed points but what is the stability of the fixed points so we have just seen that the stability depends on del f del x at the fixed point so the fixed point so the first fixed point is root of minus r second fixed point is minus root of minus r and the function f that we are plotting is this r plus x square so df dx is 2 going to be 2x so f prime x so remember primes are special derivatives and dots are temporal derivatives so f prime x is 2x so it will be 2 square root of minus r and minus 2 square root of minus r so when r is negative this is obviously negative when r is negative this is obviously positive so the positive root gives a positive value of the slope and hence it is unstable so this particular branch is the unstable branch whereas this particular branch is the stable branch and in this particular case we we could find out everything analytically but let us see how to implement this on python so uh, we do have this function where we have wrapped it and now we are more interested to find out the roots so i mean here analytically it's possible but still let us uh, make use of python's libraries to find out the roots so for that let us import fsolve so if you recall from the previous lectures fsolve is a is a solver which finds out roots of nonlinear algebraic equations. So let us import that from scipy dot optimize import f solve. All right. So for for using f solve, we have to pass a function handle. So this particular thing has to be made into a function handle. So def f and it will take as an input x and it will return r plus x square and let this function take as an optional parameter not an optional parameter as an argument r okay so it will take the value of x and r and it will return me the fx that we have uh, in the analytical expression all right so once we have this let us say sol is equal to f solve the function handle f the guess value so let me put two guess values one on this side so let one guess value be minus two and let one guess value be 2. The arguments to the function so args equal to r and let us pass the full output to the solution. So we need the full output because we need to know whether there has there is a root found or not because obviously for r positive there will be no root so f solve will say i did not find anything so in order to assess that information whether it has been able to converge or not it will pass all the information in fact let us take this in a different cell okay let me copy this let me go back to the previous cell i don't want to disturb this cell let me go to a different cell okay so let me make the correct yeah 
okay so let me run this and see if there's an error so it ran properly i have not yet passed r from this cell it is using the r from the previous cell so let r be equal to 1 so now r is positive and we expect the solution to not have converged so let us see what soul is okay excellent so it contains two values and then it says that the iteration is not making good progress okay so the meaning of this is it's not um, it's not able to converge properly okay it's it's trying to do iterations but it's finding nothing so in that case let us see what soul zero is it, it gives this what soul one is oh sorry and what soul two is it says five so the thing about f solve is if it gives an output the soul two object will be equal to one okay this particular value that it is printing if it is not one then it means it has not converged and how do i know that let me double click on this and go to contextual help okay so function x not args so this is how you pass everything we can pass the jacobian as well we don't need to do that it returns what it returns x and the info directory so this is the info directory that we just read number of function calls number of jacobian calls we don't need all that it outputs an error integer it is an integer flag it is set to 1 if solution is found otherwise it will not return 1 it will return some other value so it has returned to us a value of 5 it means the solution has not converged okay so let us make use of that information so after this line we have obtained the value of soul so if soul 2 is not equal to 1 or rather if soul 1 soul 2 is equal to 1 then we should do something with it so if uh, soul 2 is equal to 1 let us classify the roots okay meaning when i know that roots are there like this i know that there are roots let me check the value of f prime x at those roots and classify those roots as being a stable fixed point or an unstable fixed point okay so if sol2 is equal to 1 this obviously means solution has converged so now i don't know how many roots this has okay I know in this particular question that I have two roots. In general, I will not know how many roots I have. So I must loop over sol zero because look, sol zero will that number of elements of sol zero will be the number of roots that F solve has found. So then I will say for i in np dot a range zero to np dot size of soul zero so just to give you a context np dot size of soul zero is equal to two if i had five roots np dot size of soul would have been five so i do a loop over all the roots okay for i in this what should i do i should check the root so root is equal to sol 0 i so this is the root that we extract so i will loop over all the roots and sol my root will contain iteratively the first root the second root the third root the fourth root the fifth root how many number of roots you have so after this i will check slope at root is equal to df dx i have to make a function df dx which will evaluate the slope of root so let me make that function def 
df dx x comma r return two times x. Okay, so it will return the slope at the root. If slope at root is greater than zero, then I should plot it. So how should I plot it? I should plot as a cross because it's an unstable point. So plt dot plot. So I have to plot on the x-axis the r. So over on the x-axis I have to plot the value of r. And on the y-axis I must plot the value of the root. And I must plot it as an x. Let me make it as a blue x. Okay. Else. Plot r comma root as a red circle. So if it's a stable root, it will plot a red circle. If it's an unstable root, it will make a blue cross. Okay. So let us see what happens. Okay, there's an error. Duplicate argument in function r. So this has to be x. Okay. So obviously there was no root, so there's no plot. Let me make r equal to minus 1. Mm, I have to pass two functions. Okay. Well, obviously we have made a small mistake. This should not be 2 star star x. This has to be only 2 times x. Okay. Okay. So let's run this. So obviously this is a unstable root as we have seen over here. And this is a stable root as pointed by the red circle. So now what do we need to do is to loop over various values of r and draw this entire diagram. So what should I do? I have to make r array is equal to np dot lin space minus 2 to 2 and I have to wrap everything inside a loop which will iterate over various values of r. So I must put everything inside here uh, over here inside a loop inside a for loop. So for r in r a then I have to indent everything because I want to execute this entire chunk of code inside the loop and that's it. So let us execute this cell and see what happens. Excellent. So we do see, let me change the aspect ratio of the plot. Um, so ax equal to plt dot gca x underscore set x dot set aspect sets to okay and let us uh, make the x limit all the way to the r range that we have so plt dot x lim it should go from minimum value of r to the maximum value of r so np dot min of r a to np dot max of r a so this is how the bifurcation diagram looks like. Let us plot the x-axis for completeness. So plt dot a h a x h line and let us put it at zero. So a x h line is just a quick function for drawing a horizontal line passing through zero. Okay, so this shows us how the bifurcation occurs as we are changing the value of r let me make it one so as we are changing the value of r from left to right we are going from a pair of roots one unstable one stable we are reaching the critical value of r at zero after which we have no more stable unstable points okay everything vanishes there's no fixed points in fact So 
RC which is zero, it indicates that once the parameter crosses this value of R, we will have no more fixed points. So this kind of bifurcation is called as a saddle node bifurcation. Okay, so this is how we can do it. Now all this is fine. I mean it may appear that this is a very 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 specific condition. I mean why would I expect this kind of a ordinary differential equation to appear? Well let us delve further into what is going on. So first of all what is happening at the point of bifurcation? You have a function of x which looks something like this and as you are changing the value of r it, it reaches this critical condition where it is just becoming tangential to the x-axis. So for the saddle node bifurcation we have what? We have fx vanishing okay we also have so fx vanishing is tantamount to that point being a fixed point okay that's for sure so we just have a fixed point which appears okay and the other condition is it is tangential to the x-axis so df dx must also be zero at at that crossover condition so what was x uh, fx so fx was equal to r plus x square so for what uh, value of r does it happen so df dx will be equal to 2x so this has to be 0 and this has to be 0 at the point we achieve a crossover from two stable roots uh, from from two fixed points to no fixed point so when this is 0 it implies x equal to 0 and when we substitute x equal to 0 over here so this is that that fixed point which um, takes part in the bifurcation and we substitute this over here we obtain rc that is a critical control parameter to be equal to 0 as well so r equal to 0 and x equal to 0 are like the critical pair so rc equal to 0 is the control parameter critical and it corresponds to x equal to 0 and this is the place where bifurcation occurs so now it is not just this equation that exhibits such a behavior let us look at an example let us look at a at an example such as dx dt or in fact let me write it as x dot t uh, is equal to e to the power uh, r minus x minus e to the power minus x okay let us uh, try to see what the bifurcation diagram for this looks like so because we have already written the code we can simply modify our function and the derivative for having this kind of an output so let me copy this entire cell let me make a new cell so this will be r minus x minus np dot exp p of minus x and the derivative will be minus 1 plus np dot exponential of minus x so let me run this and see what happens well we do have a bifurcation what happens over here what what do we see so as r varies from minus 2 to 2 at a certain value at a certain value so there are no roots so far but after a certain point there are two roots one is a stable root the upper branch is a stable branch the lower branch is an unstable branch okay let us put those annotations as well let us let us have a look at the function so xy string okay so i need to pass the x y over here so let us put the string at 0.5 and minus 1.2 okay so it's the unstable branch and let me put another string on top 
which will say it's a stable branch. All right. So the stable branch and unstable branch are these, and there is a critical point somewhere over here. I mean, we could obviously increase the resolution of the R. So let us increase the resolution of R A. Let us let me take two hundred points to pinpoint where that happens. Okay. Actually, it's very difficult to pinpoint by just looking. So you, what you should do is find out the first occurrence of R where this condition fails okay where this condition fails when this does not return one it means that it is it is not having two solutions but the moment it starts returning one you have two solutions or you have roots not just just two solutions but you have roots i'm not going to do it right now but you can try it when you have time so it is clear that uh, even this equation does have a saddle knot bifurcation behavior and why is that why does this equation also have a saddle knot bifurcation behavior let us look deeply into uh, how this equation reacts in the vicinity of the fixed point so let us expand uh, let us expand this around x equal to 0 so x dot is r minus x minus so this becomes what 1 minus x plus x square by 2 factorial and so on so this becomes r minus 1 this x cancels out plus x square by 2 factorial so obviously the first root that will occur over here is x equal to 0 so this uh, expansion of the function that we're doing is near that bifurcation point so near the bifurcation point the equation behaves like this and it has the same form so x dot is some constant plus x square by 2 so it does have the same form so obviously near the bifurcation uh, boundary it has the same prototypical behavior as this particular equation all right so that is why studying such prototypical problems is quite important and such a reduction of a problem in the vicinity of the bifurcation point is called as a normal mode or a normal form not a normal mode uh, the normal form for a saddle node bifurcation is this okay is this so this is a normal form for a saddle node bifurcation so obviously there are different normal forms for different kinds of bifurcation but for now we have only studied the saddle node bifurcation can we prove this rigorously can we um, prove that near uh, the bifurcation point it will always reduce to a normal form and the answer is yes let us take a quick look into that so what are the conditions when uh, the bifurcation occurs so the conditions are that f of x has to be equal to 0 and df dx at uh, x also has to be 0 okay so let us uh, write down x dot is equal to f of x and it is a parameter of r as well so it is a function of x and r so this can be written as f of x star comma rc plus del f del x at x star comma rc times x minus x star plus del f del r at x star comma rc r minus rc plus del 2 f del x2 x minus x star whole square by 2 factorial at x star comma rc now by very definition of being a bifurcation point fx will be 0 essentially fx comma r will be 0 
so x star comma rc will be zero because that is the bifurcation point and hence this term will vanish similarly del f del x at x star comma rc will also be zero and hence this particular term also vanishes obviously there are higher order terms but because we are studying the behavior of this system near x star and rc this is what we can write and essentially x dot eventually boils down to del f del r at x star comma rc times r minus rc plus del 2 f del x 2 1 by 2 factorial times x minus x star whole square and quite obviously you can obviously cast this as a times r plus b times x square where a and b are various constants which contain all those various terms so this has to be at x star comma rc and hence these uh, such equations under the conditions of a saddle node bifurcation do reduce to that kind of a normal form okay so this is what uh, i wanted to discuss about saddle node bifurcations before ending this lecture let me also show you how you can geometrically think about this particular equation um, sorry this where is it yeah where you can geometrically think about this particular equation so how do you geometrically find fixed points for this obviously i mean you can plot it and see but it is comprised of two functions r minus x and e to the power minus x so at the fixed point x dot will be equal to zero what that means is r minus x will be equal to e to the power minus x the curve for e to the power minus x looks something like this and r minus x is a straight line and depending on what the value of r will be we will have a family of straight lines which will look something like this so now we all we have to do is probe whether or not r minus x cuts e to the power minus x at one point at no points at two points and so on so when r has a large value it cuts the curve at two points so when r is large obviously there are two roots and this is something which we can corroborate with this diagram over here when r is zero this is what it will look like and obviously there is no root in fact for quite some time there will be no root until it reaches this tangentiality condition so when r minus x becomes tangential to e to the power minus x we will have only one root and that is the condition for bifurcation it is going from no roots to two roots through that particular tangency condition so at the point of bifurcation at the point of bifurcation we will have two things one is the blue line intersecting with the yellow curve that is r minus x will be equal to e to the power minus x that is one condition and the other condition is the slope of r minus x will be equal to the slope of e to the power minus x okay so the slope of r minus x is equal to minus 1 the slope of e to the power minus x is equal to minus e to the power minus x so what are the conditions under which this is satisfied so this is satisfied when x equal to 0 this this equation is satisfied when x equal to 0 and when we substitute x equal to 0 over here we have r equal to 1 so r equal to 1 is the critical control parameter where bifurcation occurs and the fixed point which corresponds to this particular bifurcation is equal to 0 okay so over here x equal to 0 so the y axis is x and r equal to 1 is the point where bifurcation occurs so we can go ahead and plot that line as well so plt dot a v line uh, a x v line and we have to plot it through 1 so that 
is the zone of bifurcation and it is obviously separating two roots one is a stable branch and one is an unstable branch you can obviously write a nice slider function to check the presence of roots i'm not going to do that you can try it out on your own you know how to do it by now okay so this is all i wanted to discuss about saddle knot bifurcations in the next lecture we're going to look into the other kinds of bifurcation namely transcritical bifurcation and pitchfork bifurcation until then it's goodbye from me try to experiment as much as you can experience is your best friend bye